Okay, Monday morning, let's go ahead and look at the stock market. We're gonna use the charts to be our guide. So we're basically technical analysis and let's see where things are heading. If you guys are finding value in the content or if you're new, subscribe. You know, I'm putting out videos all the time. And then if you're interested in kind of additional trade ideas, additional charts, additional market insight, more, more timely uh, commentary on where I think things are heading and charts, Private member group, link in the description below. Five bucks a month, cancel anytime. Check it out if you're interested. Okay, triple Qs, guys. So I'm gonna just kind of give you an idea of what I think is going on. We, you know, if we look at the weekly chart, I gotta go kind of narrow down from time frames. And we're really, I'm really focused on triple Qs because obviously that's the tech, that's the tech stocks, right? That's the, the those those large cap tech stocks are pretty much responsible for most of the gains in the last few years. Uh, so they'll likely be the reason why the market sells off as well. On the weekly chart, my chart's a little messy, but look, we've got support, support. We hit the 200-day moving average last week, and so yeah, it made sense for a bounce. I called that out in the private member group, said it told everyone Monday morning, Monday pre-market, I closed all my shorts uh, and flipped long, and then looking for a bounce, we got the bounce. Now this week, you can see, look, if I zoom in, it's just Monday, but we're right there. We're pretty flat. We're not. We haven't gone anywhere, so I don't know if it will we'll go anywhere today. I do expect the week though to very, very likely uh, have some selling in it. And I am expecting it doesn't have to be this week. We could maybe have like a pretty flat week, and then maybe another flat week. We could kind of grind for a couple weeks, just hold up, not really move up, not really move down. Um, that's that's one possibility I could easily see that or we just get some selling and we get that rejection uh, we get that rejection this week so ultimately we broke that trend last week closed still above trend and then this week I think we could get that selling where we basically get that weekly close probably down at the 200 day I think they'll try to you know keep us guessing there but close down at the 200 day again on the weekly chart would be a break of this uptrend so keep an eye out for that. No guarantees that's gonna happen, but that's that's kind of my preferred scenario that I think is gonna happen. Then if I go down to the daily chart, you'll see here on the daily, all right, on the daily, there's this downtrend to watch. All right, we've had some reactions, so maybe they wanna go up and hit that again, test that. And I, if we do, I think we get rejected there. So that's kind of the maximum upside I see in the triple Qs. And from where, where we're at right now, it's about, it's about 2%, I would say, to the upside, um, which, you know, maybe up to about 460, all right? You also have horizontal resistance right in here. So again, I th it, they could pop it, but I really think about 460 is the maximum upside. Anything beyond that, especially if you break out from this downtrend here, then, you know, that's just not, it's just, it's not bearish in any way. And, you know, that, that, I, it's not, I wouldn't want to remain short if we start to get daily closes above that trend line, start to pop these highs. Um, anything for sure above this 473.40 on a daily close, and you're most likely going to put in new all time highs. All right. So, because you've got some resistance there. So, you really have no business closing on a daily candle. Anything above 474 is, you know, elevates that probability to all time new highs. Okay, so now that I've kind of gone through the potential upside and how I see things potentially playing out to the upside if they go that way, um, I wanna talk about my preferred scenario, which is really the downside. Um, and even if we go up a little more, I talked about where I think things will end, and then I do see the higher probability being down. So either down now or a little bit more up and then down. All right, but regardless, I'm seeing more downside. And here's what I've got going on here. If you look, we, we're bear flagging right now on the triple Qs. You can see here, you've got this flagpole. So this was kind of the big impulsive drop that spooked a bunch of people and spiked the VIX, all right? And then we've been flagging out over the last, you know, basically a week or so since early last week and we're flagging out now. I've got the, I pulled the volume back up. Um, you can see the, the bars behind here. See this little light, these light colored bars that's volume and volume is clearly dropping off there so as we're rising volumes dropping off that's 
that's a you know textbook bear flag pattern. So you've got the flag pull, you've got a flag on lower volume, you know, you've got increased volume on the move down. So and you can see it behind there, increased volume. Then you flag out on decreasing volume. We've got that. And then you look for that continuation of the flag pull. So here's the flag pull here, and it just depends on where we continue. Now, if we do go up to that 460, then that flag pull would really project us going down to about 413 and that you know that lines up pretty cleanly with uh, a level of support you can see reaction low right there there's some reaction highs right through there so that would be the projected target I like that I think it you know it, it aligns well so it in that scenario we do go up to that 460 and then we drop you know that continuation to the downside about 413 50 you don't want to wait for the exact level if you're gonna short that you definitely would want to cover ahead of that level. Okay, so that is my preferred scenario right now is maybe grind for a few more days up to that 460 and then drop. We could drop now, but here's the thing, all right? There's no guarantees we're gonna go up a little bit more to that 2% target. There's no guarantees and the risk reward is not favorable to remain long. So if we go up, the upside is about 2%, all right? And if we actually go down to that target, then the downside from basically where we're at now, it's about eight and a half, eight percent. So it's a four to one. That's what you call picking up nickels in front of a steamroller. All right. Technically, two percent upside and an eight percent downside. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to chance. It's just a. It's not favorable to be long. It's more favorable to be short, even if you, you know, if we do go up that two percent upside. So what I'm doing is I am building a short position. I'm scaling in. Uh, I'm not. It's not a hard short. It's not an all-in short or anything like that. But I am. I have. I have a starter short. And as we go up higher, if we do, I'll continue to add up to about that 460 level, not above. All right. If we start to go above, I'll start looking at stopping out. Okay. But if we go up there and we that's as far as we go then it's, I'll have a very good position, a very good entry position for the down move. You don't want to be shorting, all right? This is just kind of a, you know, you got to get past the psychology. On a big down move like this, boom, this is where everybody wants to short, but this is not the time to be shorting. You want to be shorting into resistance or breaks of support, okay? So you either, you either short as we rally up into resistance or as we start breaking some key support levels, you, you could short there but you don't wanna be shorting as you're falling to support like most people wanna short a lot. Most people wanna chase trades, all right? They, they don't wanna enter a trade early because they don't see price action working in their favor. So entering a trade early, like a short trade, for example, by entering this short trade now, I'm not profitable instantly, all right? As I take the position, it continues to grind it higher a little bit going against me. And you know you can question your trade a little bit, but as long as the technicals hold up, you know I stick with the trade. And then, and I have a trading plan. I, you know I've kind of lined, I've kind of laid that out. You know where where I stop out, where I start to look to stop out, things like that. So as we go up, the move's going against me, but ultimately I'm getting a really favorable entry. And then, as it moves down, if it does what I think it's going to do. I'm able to take profit where most people who didn't want to short here, they're trying to chase that trade, trying to, you know, chase a short trade. Uh, and, and you know, that's just not the time to be doing it. So, all right, that's my trading plan for triple Qs. Let's move over to SPY. Okay, SPY, the reason why I think we're going lower is also because of the SPY chart. So SPY, a couple of things on SPY. We'll start on the weekly. Again, this is the S&P 500 most heavily weighted by the tech sector, but you still got, it's the broad market in general. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a weighted, market cap weighted, but it is, you know, it is kind of the gold standard for calling it the market. Um, all right, on the weekly chart, uptrend. Clear reactions there and trends broken. So it's sell the rip in the broad market. Okay, now where do we rip to? You know, because we, we had a nice impulsive drop from the highs this thing fell nine, ten percent. I mean, that's about as far as you're going to typically see the market fall before it starts to rally. The market doesn't typically crash 
right out the gate. You know, when you if you change trend or when you change trend, you don't typically see it just crash right at that first leg down because you've got a lot of bulls that are embedded that you know they've rode this uptrend line they're buying the dip and they're going to just continue to buy the dip until they start to take on losses so they see this as just a dip they buy it thinking we're going to all-time new highs and then you know if we don't we start to come down that's where that's where they start to say hey i just took a big beating and all of a sudden then the fear and panic builds and then ultimately Towards the end of a downtrend, you get that panic selling, that plunge, that crash. Um, but in the beginning, it typically just kind of, they call it, it uh, falls the slope of hope. So it falls, then you get hope, then it falls, and then you get hope. And then ultimately, as you get lower and lower, then the hope starts to dry up and you get the panic selling. So on the SPY though, that's the weekly chart. We never hit the 200 day moving average. We haven't checked that. We checked it in the triple Qs, have not hit it in the SPY. So I'm expecting that to come hit that 200 day moving average. Okay, so if that happens, SPY hits the 200. It's already broken the uptrend. So, you know, that trend's broken, but SPY hits the 200. Q comes down again for that next leg lower. Break Probably breaks the 200. And then you get the rally, you know, at the 200 for the SPY. And that and that's where the Qs would rally as well. So that's what I'm seeing there on the weekly chart. If I go down to the daily, uh, on the daily chart here, again, same pattern, bear flag. All right, big flag pull, rising price on declining volume. And then you look for the continuation of the flag pull. Oh, let me just kind of... Trying to clean up the charts as I go. Uh, the continuation of the flagpole, depending on where the flag goes to, I could see maximum upside. There's some resistance right up here about 539.50, 540. Um, so that to me would be the maximum upside. And then the continuation of the flagpole sets us up, I believe, for a push down to about 494.30 or the 200. The 200, it's going to hit the 200. It could overshoot, but ultimately I think it probably holds that 200 at least on the first tag and you get the bounce. So I would just target the 200, um, which is about 503-ish, depending on when we get there. Okay, so that's the pattern that's playing out right now. Of course, we need to see the continuation. Um, so you can buy at resistance or if you wanna wait, but you know, there's a potential support line here on the hourly for the SPY. But oftentimes these things, they really get going as impulsively as they started, which would likely mean we probably just gap down. There'll be some news thing that comes out, but you'll gap down, there'll be some news thing, and then it'll continue. It's already priced into the charts that it's likely going to continue. So when you get the gap down, they'll slap some news headline, but it's technically based. We know that because we can see that the charts, as of right now, are set up to go lower. So when they go lower, and then there's all of a sudden a news headline, we'll know that we were talking about the highest probability of it going lower before we even knew about whatever headline that actually was. But again, the news is out there. They work with Wall Street to basically pacify the retail trader so that they feel comfortable in knowing why they lost money and don't, you know, don't bail on their trades and keep their money it, it, you know, at Wall Street. So they need to float headlines out there uh, to make people feel feel good i guess all right moving on gold rallying today gdx but again technically no change we still have resistance right there at, you know 37.50 ish and there's just no change just a little rally today so i'm still leaning towards downside in gold now if we break out and start to break run higher from really the highs the most recent highs right here above 39 then that actually would be a breakout and we'll look at that you know that could be that could be the start of a new uptrend in the gold miners. I don't think it's gonna happen because again, I think the SPY is gonna roll over and these miners should roll over with the SPY. Couple individual trade ideas, shop, all right, I talked about this one. Again, you have a downtrend line, resistance. It doesn't have a great resistance line because I've only got like two data points. So I'm not in love with this thing. I do think it's gonna pull back, uh, but I, you know, I'm not going too heavy in it. Um, you did gap up on big earnings, so that's what this move is, and you rallied it right into the 200-day moving average. So that's resistance. Just as the algos are programmed to <clears throat> buy the 200, they're also programmed to sell the 200. Just like in the past we've seen, you know, you hit the 200 here, boom, hard sell. 
So, you know, I think there's a pullback, maybe a gap fill. I mean, that's, that would be a, a good target, would be a gap fill. I don't know if we get that much, but, um, or potentially the 62-ish, 61, you know, there's a level there because that's also a gap. So those are the two levels I'd be targeting for a potential pullback. I think that first one's nice. It's about a 9% pullback. It's probably about what I'd be willing to give it. Um, and of course, you'd need to, if the SPY was selling off, then this will likely continue lower. This one looks good, Eli Lilly, healthcare stock. Kind of a mania stock though in the healthcare sector um, based on that the o Ozempic uh, pill that they had. Um, this one on the daily chart, I, I think again, I think all that's priced in. So on the daily chart, you've got support, 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 support. See that big down candle stock cold right there at the support line and then you had several days where they held support. So it validates that as a trend line. And then when you broke, you broke on a gap down. So that's impulsive. Gaps are always impulsive, all right? Gap down and sold straight down. It didn't hit the 200 day. And then they stepped in to buy because the triple Qs hit the 200 day. And so the market said, okay, we can rally. The Qs is gonna hold up. And the market follows the Qs for the most part. Um, and then <clears throat> rallied right back into that trend line resistance. So we're there still. We've been there for, you know, Friday it hit it, overshot it a little bit. But in general, we are at resistance. It's an objective short in this area. It could continue to grind around for a few days. I don't put that, you know, I, I could completely expect that. But the upside, I believe, is limited. And I do think we will get rejected here, whether we trade here for a few days. I do, I do see a rejection, an impulsive move down, and then ultimately head down to this target, which is about... 7, 7.30-ish, 7.29.58 is where I have it. We'll hit the 200, probably undercut it, hit that support level, and then that would be, you know, that'd be a good target for the next bounce. Home builders, you know, here's my thesis on the home builders. Some of it's kind of fundamental, but, you know, um, we, 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 we now basically have interest rates are, I think they're pricing in a half a percent rate cut. With the pot, with the potential, and I just looked at it yesterday with the with the potential of a three quarter point rate cut. Now, right now, half a point is leading, so that's most likely. Uh, but there is, you know, it was like forty five percent or something for a seventy five basis point rate cut. Now, if we get that next move lower in the spy, we're probably getting that seventy five basis point cut. Now, here's the thing, home builders, right? They've been they've been benefiting because. There's been really so low supply of used homes on the market because people that are in homes locked into really low mortgages don't want to give up that mortgage. It, the cost of living has increased so much with inflation and the home prices and they're locked into rates of the past where it keeps their cost of living down. So nobody wants to move. They're, they're not moving, all right? They're just stuck in their house. And even if they wanted to move, they, they can't, all right? They can't afford the new... To, to move. So existing home supply has been low, which means that the only home supply coming on has been new homes, all right? And that's benefited the home builders. Now I see as the interest rates start to fall, as you get, you know, as they start to drop, you're going to see more supply of existing home builders come onto the market or existing homes because as the rates get closer to what people currently have locked in, they say, you know what, we can now move. Let's put our house up for sale. And you're going to see a flood of used homes, existing homes, come onto the market, which is going to drop prices in homes, including the new homes. All right. New home builders are going to compete with existing home builders, which means prices should come down. And we should see these things, XHB, come down. Now, the technicals for XHB, which is your home builder ETF, you've got support, support. You broke trend. And it, look, we back tested twice. If I extend that out, you know, just kind of extend it out. It's oh, it's it was like a perfect back test. Okay, two back tests of the trend line, continuation of the negative divergence. See the momentum just con dropping off. All right, that continued, and you got the drop. So these to me look like sell the rip, and it does also look like a bear flag. All right, you've got the first leg lower. We're kind of flagging out, very similar to the spy, and then we continue to move lower. Now I don't know where this flag is gonna end because we haven't seen the continuation of the flagpole. So it's hard to say, 
Um, you know, I there, there's some support levels down below. I think there's one right, you know, we could look at those those lows right here. That makes sense, all right? You could maybe target that, which is about 97.46. Um, this trend line here, I had it, but we undercut it recently. So I don't think it's gonna hold again. You know, I do think we probably go down to these lows, potentially even take them out and go down to right down here at 90.91. So those are two levels to target. 97.60 and 90.91. Of course, what I like to do is that if I see a level overhead, I'll target that first level. I'll cover shorts if I'm short. And if it breaks that level, I can reshort it. You, you want to enter a short as you're running into resistance or breaking support. So if you do come down and you hit the level and it holds, you've covered your short at a good level. If it breaks, you broke support and you're very likely going down to the next level of support. JP Morgan, I think, looks like a decent short as well. And if JP Morgan goes down, the financials go down. So uh, I am currently short this one. Um, again, on the reason why I like it on the daily chart, support, 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 break of support, sell the rip, all right? And so break of support, you hit you hit that first level, next level of support, basically, once we broke that trend line support, rallied. And now, it yes, it has overshot and it's kind of recovered that trend line. Again, I think that's just a false recovery. Given what the SPY looks like, uh, you know, if the SPY does make that next leg lower, then this is very likely just a little false recovery and boom, we're gonna come back down to that support and break and go hit the 200 day moving average. Okay, so that would be my target right now is a push down to the 200 day moving average. Um, again, need to see the SPY start to break down and we need to see some of those other, you know, triple Qs especially start to, to break down again as well. So most of the trades that I've outlined are pivoting on that, that you know, that bear flag pattern that seems to be set up. So we need to see it now. Uh, but again, I'm building a position for that to happen in anticipation. And if it doesn't happen, I'll stop out with a small loss. So that's my trading plan. I'll get the video out, drop me a thumbs up, check out the private member group in the description below, and I will catch you guys on the next one.